five, four, three, two, one. My name is Muhammad Zari Abdul Mu'in, metric number 10133. I will explain about our theory and experiment. The first objective is to determine the relationship between mass and natural frequency. This is our uh, equation that we use. This is moment initial for flywheel and this is moment initial for additional mass. Uh, the total of moment initial is plus uh, moment initial of flywheel and additional mass. This is the equation. Uh, m r squared over 2 and this is uh, additional mass equation m a h squared the, uh, we can see this this is of r and this is h r and h is fixed okay this uh, from this equation we can get uh, we can substitute this i in this uh, the frequency equation and then we can get this equation uh, this equation is set k over m r squared over 2 plus m a h squared uh, as we know uh, w n is a natural frequency and m is a mass so as a conclusion we can get the, if the mass increase the natural frequency will decrease and if s mass decrease and the natural frequency will increase Michael Anal Banki uh, my ID number is MC10005 okay. for our second objective is uh, to determine the dk, DK rate in and under them system. This is the displacement versus time graph and along the dot line is the S and the peak distance the peak peak distance is the period T. This uh, DK red sigma equal to epsilon n from this formula we can find that when we put the mass is small and we will have a DK rate is bigger. When we for the mass is larger and we will have a DK rate is smaller. Good afternoon, my name is Muhammad Nakyudin bin Maksaleh, metric number MH10014. Our experiment uh, is about uh, the free torsional vibration, single degree of freedom. As we know, this is our bench for our experiment. We use this flywheel and this both ends is the additional mass and we use this constant shaft which is diameter 5 mm uh, the, uh, the sensor we use is the accelerometer which then connected to the NIDAQ National Instrument Data Equitization and then uh, it connected to the PC which uh, connected to the software uh, measurement and automation explorer and the desilet software Hi, I'm Yap Shin Yi, MH10016. Today, I will present about Daisy Lab setup. Okay, this is the layout of our worksheet in Daisy Lab. First, we go to measurement, hardware setup to synchronize our Daisy Lab with the NIDAQ. Then, we go to measurement setup to set our sampling rate and block size. Then we check our time base. Is it same as the one we set? Sampling rate 2000 and block size 4096. For input, we choose the torsion boon in analog NIDAQ. Then we put a YT chart to display the raw data. In scaling, we scale down our gravity to acceleration. From the raw data, we can get our frequency as 1.1 Hz. Then we can set our low pass and high pass filter. For the low pass filter, we set as 1.5 and we undergo integration to get velocity. Then we go to high pass filter. 1 hertz and then we 
integrate again to become displacement. We put one more high pass filter, one hertz. For displacement, velocity and acceleration, we displace using YT chart and digital meter. Then we record our data. The recorder shows the displacement time graph of our data. Then the data window we use rectangle and block size 4096. FFT we use the amplitude spectrum. And then we display our FFT. Let me explain how we can get our decay from our experiment. Then, we open the lazy lab and we add read data, recorder, minimum or maximum, and write data. Then, we open the DF file that we set from previous ones, and that file is uh, our displacement versus time graph. That is so the function of the minimum or maximum is to record the every high, uh, high, uh, peak point of the graph and form a new graph at the end. Then save it as a ASCII file. Then we move to Microsoft Excel and we it will form all the data, come out all the data and we calculate for long S then put a scatter graph and we will get this this kind of line and we will form also we will form these equations when we add thin line then we can know that negative 0 0.1314 is our decay rate by compared to these two equations next I will show you how we can get our natural frequency form from our experiment then this one is our displacement versus time graph. Then we take two high peak points of the curve and we need it to find the period be between this curve. And we use a cursors, then we can easily know that the time period is 0 0.9 second. We get the value of the period, so we substitute into this equation, then we get the value of the omega d. Omega D is the damping frequency. Then we substitute damping frequency into this equation and we also can get this value so that at the end we can get natural frequency.